What's going on guys? This is one of my neighbors down the road. She lives in a double wide mobile home. It's a mobile home system. It's 14 years old. It's a Nordine. And uh, she asked me if I would come down and take a look at it, do a little maintenance on it, service it, check it. And that's what I am here to do. guys i was running this unit and there you go a 14 year old coil with copper still original still holding charge no leaks go figure that anyway this thing's running a little bit of a high head pressure in heating mode and this blower wheel back here is caked up pretty good so we're going to pull that out and clean it and the evaporator coil as well. We're going to get back in there. We're going to clean that coil up a little bit. Um, the capacitor on this blower motor is good. Uh, the filters are in good condition. So we're going to pull this thing out. And we're going to get this blower wheel cleaned up. So the first thing I notice when you're pulling these blower housings out, some of these mobile home units, you got to be really careful. Um, they kind of tuck a little bit back behind the line set probably gonna have to cut this drain line out <clears throat> temporarily and uh, the clearance on it is gonna hit the top of that trap so we're gonna have to redo the drain line cut it out of the way get this housing out and get this thing outside and get it cleaned up so we got this thing outside and this hub is pretty pretty cruddy there's crud on it and some rust on it we're gonna see if we can get this thing out without resorting to a motor puller i do have one it's still in factory fresh condition because i don't really use it that much there has been a time or two i've run into a condenser fan motor that's really just been a it was just really rusted and locked in there and I'd rather waste 20 minutes trying to keep cleaning and cleaning and cleaning i just threw it on there and got it out but anyway the high subscriber count i gave a lot of credit to another youtuber that dropped my name a few times and i appreciate that really do popular amongst the residential especially guys he's he's been doing this a long time he's been on here a long time i enjoy his videos learn some things from him a few little tricks common sense stuff really which seems to lack in a lot of people these days but i got to looking at my analytics and that big bump in subscribers i got through the middle and end of the summer well i kind of over build the credit on that i put up a short clog drain line nine a little less than nine thousand subscribers actually came from that short it was 3.9 million views on it i'll put a link to it in the description it was controversial probably why it got shared and shared and and that goes to tell you guys, just a good short for 35, 40 seconds. If you do it right, right kind of content, you just never know what's going to blow up and what's not. But that short got three, a little over 3.8 million views. And I got about 8,500, 8, 8,500 8, subscribers just from that short. So give myself a little more credit. I guess than where I originally thought the credit was supposed to go but I still give him credit he, uh, he, he was good for some subscribers I'm sure but uh, anyway let's get this lock screw out of here I'll use that And 
that thing fill. No puller needed. So now let's get the wheel out of this thing so we can get it cleaned up. Three-eighths chuck. But yeah, cleaning these wheels, guys. You gotta look at them. They get kicked up. What happens is those blades have that cut to them, and they're meant to grab and throw air when this blower is running. And when they get caked up with dirt, they flatten out, and they can you can lose 200 CFM of your airflow real easy just by having a dirty blower wheel and then you combine that with a little bit dirty coil and a dirty filter and you're going to get high super heat you get the ground screw out of there you end up with high super heat situations or low super heat i'm sorry my bad on that one low superheat you're not getting enough air through that coil in cooling mode and then you're going to get some high head pressure on a heat pump uh, overheating on a furnace running hot you've lost some airflow so there the thing came out pretty easy but uh, a lot of people overlook a dirty blower wheel It can cause some serious issues. I mean, it's really the equivalent of a stopped up evaporator coil. And you ask me why I'm doing all this to clean the blower wheel? Because that's the way you're supposed to do it. You see these people, I've seen them, and there's some popular YouTubers that have done this. I won't call out any names because I always... <laughs> we know how that works. And uh, when you point a finger, even though they're guilty, they get all over the top of you. So, dirty blower wheel, take it out. Don't leave the motor in the house. Don't get out there and rinse it with the motor in the dadgum housing because these motors are vented, obviously, blower motors. And you start trying to get this thing and spray water in it and clean it with the motor in there and i have seen them do it if they say they hadn't they're a liar you get water in the motor and then next thing you know you you've killed somebody's blower motor it's just not worth the risk you're not i mean you get you're going to charge for doing this obviously but you don't want to collect for doing that and then go in the hole for a damn blower motor because you did it lazy and half-ass. Pardon my French. So go the extra step to do it right so you don't take a risk on causing a problem. Let's go get this thing cleaned up. Just gonna take some general all-purpose cleaner. And spray this thing down a little bit. It's longer to get the cleaner on there. It doesn't do anything else, really. Spray it down real good. And you want to make sure you get all these blades cleaned thoroughly. Because here's the problem you run into if you don't clean one of these thoroughly. You leave some dirt kicked up on one of the blades. You don't get them all. Her, her evil Knievel neighbor out on his crotch rocket but uh what will happen is you leave some dirt kicked up on one of these blades and then you throw the wheel out of balance so if you're going to clean one you've got to clean it thoroughly and get all the dirt off because if you leave some dirt on some of these blades it's no different than that little balance that's on this wheel 
just like a car tire you got to balance it or it's going to wobble so if you don't clean it thoroughly you're going to get it all back together and those three or four places you left dirt are going to act as a weight and you are going to have a wheel shaking and wobbling and a vibration and you'll be back so if you're going to clean it clean it completely we'll start rinsing this thing off off real good get all the dirt off all each one of these blades or anything like that. I'm just going to wipe the water out of it. Get it cleaned up. Got this house out of here. Wipe the inside of that out. out of it and next thing is to make sure that you put it back in here the right way so got the motor mounts on this side over here so I want my hub on this side crud off the shaft the motor down a little bit it's not really that bad As, uh, she keeps a pretty tight filter over the top of that air handler and it catches all the air through there the doors are sealed on it so you saw it's got the front covers on the blower compartment so all the air actually goes in through the return back down through the filter some of those older mobile home units you see the front of it's not covered and you get dust and dirt to get pulled in there air bypasses the coil and that one's sealed up pretty good so good for her but anyway we're gonna get this set back down in here make sure i line up the flat side of my shaft hole we'll get these screws back in there oh, there it is three eighths and actually 
actually I want to turn it back around because I want the wires yeah, the wires are in the front that's exactly where I want it get these screws back in the mounting bracket Put the screws back in. For our plate right here. back in place. Got our wheel centered back to the middle of the housing. And she's ready to go back in the unit. All right, <clears throat> so now let's get this thing back in. And like I said, I had to cut the drain line out of the way to make room wide enough across there. The trap hangs down just far enough when it's in there straight that the housing won't get out and sneak below it. So you got to cut that and get it up out of the way. So, let's get this thing in here. They typically slide in. Fairly simple. Make sure you don't get any wires pinched along the way. And there you go. We'll put those in first. Probably a little more tedious than doing a blower motor and an actual air handler just because of the things that you have to get out of the way. I mean, some furnaces, you know how it is, you got to get the ignition boards out of the way, they're hanging down in front of the housing, things like that. So, every situation presents a little bit of a challenge, but. Getting that wheel nice and clean. And it's not something you have to do every year, like doing your coils and your drain lines, things like that. But every so many years, it's probably not a bad idea to <clears throat> have somebody pay a little extra to get the blower wheel cleaned. And that does cost extra because, I mean, it's more work. This isn't something you're going to do in, a, in an hour, hour and 15 minute general uh, heating and cooling service. Um, it, it adds about another... 20 25 minutes to the job so you know we charge extra for a blower wheel pull and clean and it's just it just is what it is so anyway we got that in there let's get this thing wired up and turned on all right we're back together and we are running we'll go out and check that charge and see how things are looking 
But here's my frustration with the Measure Quick app. Every time you turn it on, there's some kind of download. It's like, just do an automatic download once every couple of weeks or something. Every time you turn it on, you gotta wait forever for some kind of daggum download. Alright guys, so we're doing much better on the charge. The superheat on this thing when I started and checked it the first time was about 2 degrees. Now it's 8, 9. But my problem was the evaporator temperature. When I was first checking it and letting it run, the evaporator temperature was at 31, 32 degrees. So after cleaning the coil and cleaning that blower wheel, now my evaporator is up close to 40. It's 70 degrees in the house. It's 73 outside. So there's not a big load on it. But I'm um, doing much better. And uh, yeah, measure quick, guys. Every time I turn it on to try to use it, some kind of update you got to download. And that, that just gets frustrating. So. Anyway, guys, appreciate you watching. I'm going to keep up with my Field Peace app. Have a good weekend.